uh, India's military might, a force multiplier that will bring superiority over the enemy. Welcome, you're watching the newsroom right here on ET Now. I am Ajay Sharma. The markets are soft today. If you look at the overall markets, you would see that the benchmarks are trading soft, but there is activity within the space. The broader markets are doing well. Pharma, banking, select steel stocks are also doing okay. Cement continues to see up move after Ultratech's good numbers. So it's not all that bad, but it's not falling off the cliff. But yes, it is some amount of fatigue is setting into the market. Rahul Sharma is here with us to talk more about the markets. Uh, uh, Rahul, uh, talk to us about uh, how are you analyzing the market right now. Naysayers are saying market is expensive and stretched, uh, but the rally is not fizzling out in a very big manner. Right, Ajay. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, the markets are concerned, see, Ajay, uh, liquidity is available in the market. And as we are uh, seeing that globally, markets are appreciating this liquidity flow. Today also, there is a meeting of uh, FDA USA for the further clarifications. As USA is announcing 2.0 uh, uh, stimulus package, which is uh, giving boost to the markets globally. And uh, until uh, positive news of uh, COVID-19 vaccine doesn't come up, we are not expecting any big correction and market will consolidate and uh, move in positive direction only. And uh, there is uh, investment opportunity uh, is, and, and it is very clear that we can see uh, this opportunity in every decline. So buying on dips is the strategy we are opting right now. And uh, valuations uh, must have been stressed but uh, the euphoria uh, will lead the market uh, in the presence of positive vaccine and major uh, uh, profit booking will be witnessed after that period of uh, that period only. So, so uh, stocks and sector will change time to time, but buying interest uh, will be continued in the market. Rahul, there's a very important meet today uh, between top bankers and uh, uh, prime minister. Uh, regarding how the situation is. Uh, let's get in uh, my colleague and then we'll discuss how the banking situation is panning out and the factors which are, uh, you know, playing out there. Uh, Karishma, tell us uh, what are you gathering? Well, absolutely right. A crucial meeting that is set to be held today at 4 p.m. Prime Minister will be chairing a meeting with the uh, senior executives of banks, NBFCs, and uh, like you mentioned, secretaries of important ministries. What we're learning and still picking up from sources is that uh, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Corporate Affairs Secretary, Aviation Secretary, and all finance secretaries will be part of this meeting. The agenda of the meeting has been quite clear. Uh, it's been also confirmed uh, that the agenda will be around credit products and financial sustainability, financial empowerment through technology. But we are also what picking up is that PM Modi will be taking stock of the situation on the liquidity issues that the sectors have been facing and especially the concerns that banks have been putting in. Interestingly, this meeting comes at a point where the RBI financial stability report, which was just released about four days back, uh, uh, spoke about the rising uh, NPAs due to COVID-19 pandemic and the bad health uh, of the bank. Well, this 4 p.m. meeting, which is going to be held through video conference, will probably take few important decisions and uh, there will be important dis discussions due to the distress that se sectors have been uh, on the economic uh, side of it. Right. Uh, thanks very much for that, uh, Karishma. Uh, Rahul, from the banking space, uh, the kind of news flow which is coming in on fundraising, on the risks which lie ahead, higher provisioning, and now PM uh, himself is actually taking stock and meeting with the top bankers. How are you analyzing this space? Uh, like this space uh, is on a contra view right now for me. Uh, financial sector will be uh, will be bullish, and the fear of bad result is actually uh, has not that much. In and uh, as, the, uh, as we can see, the earning numbers coming uh, are decently fair and Bank and, bank and Nifty uh, has uh, has underperformed in, in this time uh, if we compare it to Nifty. 
So we believe that banking and financial stocks will be performing in coming days. Right. All right, uh, Rahul. That is, uh, of course, about the banking stocks. But let's uh, shift focus and talk about uh, the chemical space. Uh, you have one such stock on your radar today, Rahul. IO, IOL Chemical. Uh, let's pull up uh, the stock of uh, IOL Chemical and see how exactly that stock has actually done in the last, say, one year. IOL Chemical is uh, one stock which has pretty much done very well in the last one year. Uh, talk to us, Rahul. Why do you like that stock? Actually, IOL Chemical, this is the particular stock which we have been recommending from a very, good, a very long time. And uh, three months back also, we recommended this stock uh, at around 275 rupees. And as you know that we have been really bullish on API theme and it has uh, given tremendous performance uh, in, in this time. We recommended IOL uh, uh, three months back at 275 and since then it has given huge profits and currently trading near around 800 rupees. And a few days back we got uh, result update numbers from the same uh, space from Granules uh, India and RT Drugs. So we are expecting good numbers from IOL as well as it belongs to the same space uh, which will be coming on Friday. And uh, in last three, four months, um, F, uh, what I uh, uh, looked into it that FPI, including Morgan Stanley, has done one side buying in this stock. And uh, API is after running this much also, this particular stock uh, is, is uh, still low in, the, in terms of valuation. So we will recommend this stock uh, for buying, uh, but on only in the dips uh, uh, with the target price of 1000 rupees in coming six months. Uh, one second, uh, we'll just digress and re revisit that story. Rahul Kaushik Das is back with us. So Kaushik, there's an important meet between the top bankers and uh, the Prime Minister today. What in your mind uh, would actually be discussed looking at the way commentary is coming between the recently done CI meeting where top bankers met RBI or even the other news flow which is surrounding the banking space, the way you analyze it uh, as part of the integral part of the economy? Hi, uh, thanks for having me on your show. A uh, couple of things will come up for discussion. Uh, you must have seen that RBI released its uh, financial stability report last week, and over there, they're you know kind of uh, you know kind of forecasting that uh, the NPAs of the banking sector could increase from eight and a half percent in FY20 to twelve and a half percent under the baseline scenario, and it could be even higher at 14, 15 percent uh, under severe stress uh, scenario. So uh, it is kind of given that NPAs are going to re uh, increase over the next uh, 12 months or so. And uh, the other issue is that the loan moratorium that was announced and extended till August is coming to an end in August. And, uh, you know, bankers will want to discuss whether to kind of extend that loan moratorium to uh, everybody or it will be, you know, for select uh, industry groups uh, and leaving uh, the individuals uh, not uh, part of that loan moratorium and then what? should be the way forward uh, beyond 31st August. Now, the issue is that if you do not extend the loan moratorium to all the sectors and individuals, there could be a increase in NPAs uh, in October, December quarter, and for which I think the second discussion that will happen is whether one-time restructuring of loans uh, could be uh, allowed for banks so that they don't have to take the increased NPAs uh, on a front-loaded basis. So that would be very important. And 6th August, uh, yeah, with uh, a one-time restructuring of loans will be allowed or not. The other important thing that will be discussed is the recapitalization of uh, public sector banks, particularly. You must have seen that a lot of private sector banks and NBFCs, those who can access the market, has already gone and tried to raise capital because they know that NBFCs are going to increase and make, make your balance sheet stronger. So for certain public sector banks, you need to discuss how they will be recapitalized, government will have to give support. So those kind of issues will be discussed for banks and in my view the NBFCs uh, you know they have announced a special liquidity scheme which is fully guaranteed by government of India but the SPB can only buy three month residual maturity paper which ends in September uh, now obviously that timeline needs to get extended because the NBFC problem will not go away uh, by September end so all these issues I think will get discussed uh, today and then you know RBI probably will announce some of the measures on 6th August
services arm PTC India Financial Services is moving on and a uh, couple of uh, clutch of investors actually have shown interest in uh, taking over that particular company which has got almost 11,000 crore of loan book and uh, yeah that's the particular stock in focus right now. Uh, in fact uh, we understand that there are a couple of uh, large NVFCs that are backed by conglomerates which have shown interest. A uh, couple of US based American private equity companies have also shown interest uh, to pick up. It's an infra uh, licensed uh, NBFC. Uh, IDFC Investment Banking, we understand, is advising on the transaction. We reached out to both, uh, both uh, parties, but they did not want to comment on it. But we know that this transaction is moving on. 31st July is the last date for it. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, Rahul Sharma is uh, still with us. Uh, Rahul, Ajanta Pharma, why do you like? that particular stock and what's the target you have? Uh, Ajay, see Ajanta Pharma as you know that is it is into uh, it is primarily involved in, in development uh, and manufacturing and uh, marketing of specialty uh, pharmaceutical finished dosage. The company is uh, currently virtually debt free. Uh, company has uh, has a good return on equity uh, track record uh, from last three years that is around 20.82%. Uh, and the stock is uh, traveling in the range of 1350 to 1530. That is the consolidation phase of the stock. As soon as uh, it, it, it takes it over from uh, 1530 levels, uh, the targets uh, coming for Ajanta Pharma will be 1650 and 1700 in, in, in approximately six months. Uh, Rahul, last time you were there on the channel, there was uh, your, one of your stock picks was Shivali Krasayan at 350. Now it's hovering around the 450 mark. Uh, before I get you on other calls of yours, uh, what are your thoughts here? Uh, see, uh, Shivali has done really good, and and even we interacted over it that uh, this particular stock is really good, uh, as the SRL holdings was also there around 40 percent. And apart from this, uh, like uh, uh, I have been uh, like. Take, bullish over uh, some infra stocks as well. Uh, as you know, uh, Delhi Piltcon is one of those uh, uh, stocks which I am uh, currently bullish on. IDFC First Bank, that particular right. stock is also one of your stock picks. In fact, we did have right. Mr. Right. Baidinathan right. uh, also on the channel today. Uh, after the results, IDFC First Bank, it, the stock has fallen a whole lot and now hovering around. Uh, what do you think uh, from here on uh, could be the road forward for IDFC First Bank, Rahul? Uh, see, uh, Ajay, IDFC First Bank uh, numbers which we got yesterday were like really good. Provisioning has reduced and the net levels, at net levels, it has uh, come up in, in profit. Uh, net NPAs has reduced, even the gross NPA has in, uh, reduced increased uh, uh, net uh, interest margin and CASA ratio has been interest, uh, increased and, and that is what uh, the bank has reported. So I believe that uh, in this stock also uh, if we do uh, buying on dips, one can accumulate this uh, stock at the lower levels of 28 and the targets which we are seeing is around 33 to 34 uh, rupees in coming two to three months. Let's get a slice of uh, Mr. V. Vaidyanathan's conversation also with my colleagues after the results, uh, what he had to say about the way business is uh, panning out right now. No, I will share some numbers with you about uh, lending, which is not there in the investor presentation, that level of detail, but since you asked me this level of detail of a question, uh, you know, in, in April, uh, compared to a normal... The build, Delhi Billcon is one of them. What's the target over here and uh, what's the story building? Uh, see, Ajay, uh, the Delhi Piltcon is the largest player in road infra projects in India. Uh, and the order book which the company was holding till 31st March was around 19,000 crore. And in last uh, one one and two months, uh, there is new uh, orders which has which company has received of around 10,000 crores. So, uh, those are the big numbers coming from uh, the company in terms of order book. And uh, this stock has been consolidating uh, in the levels of 270 and 300 uh, range. And uh, in coming months, uh, I'm aiming to get the targets of around 350 to 375 in uh, the level decon. Rahul, we'll let you go on that one. Thanks so much for your time today. 
Uh, Anderson is in focus, uh, rallying quite sharply in trade.